Let's now discuss the wave functions for the harmonic oscillator. So we're going to have some discrete set of integers as we saw for the energies. We saw the energies depended on some integer n which started at 0 and then went up from there. And each wave function is going to have three parts. It's going to have a normalization constant n. It's going to have a polynomial called the Hermit polynomials h of n. And it's going to have a Gaussian. So naming all of those parts, we have the green part is going to be the normalization constant. <clears throat> that ensures that when we integrate psi star psi from minus infinity to infinity that we get a value of 1, certainty that the particle will be somewhere, and that there will be only one particle. And the polynomials, as I said, we're going to call the Hermite polynomials which are a special kind of polynomial that will discuss what those values are. And this e to the minus alpha x squared over 2 is a Gaussian function, which you may be familiar with from other places, including statistics. Okay, so let's break these down and discuss these uh, individually. So first, let's look at the Gaussian. So if we have a plot here, not a very straight line, try again. Okay, that's acceptable. If we have a plot here, and we're going to plot versus x with x equals 0 in the middle here. And let's plot what one of these Gaussians looks like. I'll choose that same purple color for the plotting. Okay, if we can have starts off at 0, very quickly rises to some peak and then very quickly decays off again. And this would be the case <clears throat> if we had some large value for alpha. If we have some smaller value for alpha, then it's going to rise slowly and decay slowly. So this would be a small value for alpha. So if this alpha is very small, we're going to get a very diffuse, very spread out particle. If this alpha is large, we're going to get a particle which is very contract and very squished in into a small space. So this alpha is going to take on a very specific value. And that value is the square root of k, the spring constant in the quadratic potential, 1 half kx squared, times mu, the reduced mass of both of the atoms that are forming the bond in the diatomic molecule of interest, and this divided by h bar, the reduced Planck's constant. So as the potential gets stiffer and stiffer, gets very, very high very quickly, we're going to get a larger value of alpha. And that makes sense because the particle is going to be much more contract if the potential is squeezing it into a smaller area. Similarly, if as the reduced mass gets bigger, we're going to get a particle which can confine itself to a smaller space because as that particle, as that mass gets bigger, the particle can approach the bottom of the well uh, more and more. The spacing between the energy levels gets lower and lower, and in the limit of a very large mass, the particle can reach the bottom of the well and it can just sit there. So in the limit of a very large mass, we would, just have quant we would just have classical mechanics, and the particle could exist at the bottom of the well. So that's why the alpha gets more, uh, this Gaussian gets more contract as the mass increases. So very, very light things will have to spread themselves out. Okay, so that's the Gaussian part. So what about the normalization constant, this n of n? So this n is going to equal... 1 over the square root of 2 to the n, where n is just a number, from, uh, integer from 0 to some value, <coughs> times n factorial, factorial function, times alpha over pi to the 1 fourth power. And again, n is just starting at 0, counting up from there. <coughs> So that's our normalization constant. In particle in a box, our normalization constant didn't depend on the integer n. It was square root of 2 over L for all solutions. 
this is not the case anymore and you're going to have to be careful to make sure to pick your correct normalization constant given which solution for the harmonic oscillator wave function you have. Then lastly, <clears throat> let's look at these Hermit polynomials. So we notice that the argument we're giving to these polynomials is <clears throat> alpha to the one half times x. And we can give a name of the Greek letter C to this variable, calling that alpha to the one half x. And if we substitute in what the value of alpha is in terms of our original fundamental constants, that would be k times mu over h bar squared, <coughs> all of that to the one fourth, and then tacking on an x, our, displace, our bond's displacement from equilibrium, we get this. So this is kind of a scaled uh, position quantity here. We have our x, which is our displacement from equilibrium, but the amount these Hermit de polynomials are going to displace us from equilibrium depends, uh, depends on the spring constant and depends on the reduced mass. So it's just kind of going to be a scale factor for this spatial dimension as we look at the wave functions. So what are the values of these for some given values of n? Well, h0 of c <clears throat> is just equal to 1. So the lowest energy solution of the harmonic oscillator is just a Gaussian. A Gaussian times 1, so it's going to be just a Gaussian sitting at the bottom, near the bottom of the well at x equals 0. Then the first order is go the first solution is going to give us a first order polynomial, a linear polynomial, 2c. So we're going to have a wave function that has two peaks, one, one below and one above zero. And we'll look at these later in MATLAB and see what they look like in more detail. And h2 equals 4c squared <coughs> minus 2. And you might see a trend starting to develop here. For each of these, uh, for h of n, you get an nth order polynomial and it only involves terms which are either even or odd for all of the powers of it and you're going to alternate between positive and negative. There is a function for how you can generate these. I'm not going to mention it now but if you look up Hermit polynomials you can see how you can generate these given some starting formula. And lastly, uh, h of 4 is 16 c to the fourth minus 4 c squared plus 12. Okay, so that's just an example of what some of these polynomials are. So again, for a harmonic oscillator, our wave function is going to be a normalization constant times a polynomial times a Gaussian. And next we're going to look at these in MATLAB and see what they look like in practice.